Resiliency is something that we all want, but it's also something that none of us want to test. Getting knocked down happens to the best of us, but our ability to get up again and sometimes again and then come back even stronger is what draws the line in many cases between winning and losing. So what does that have to do with the studio, this big dramatic introduction? Well, you're going to find out when we talk to our next guest. Stay tuned. Reluctantly Resilient. That is the title of the book, correct? Correct. I got it right. Across the table for me is Chrissy Myers. Thank you for coming on. I appreciate it. Um, Getting right into it. You started in the family business as a child. Now, is this toddler or was this later in this? Did you grow up there? Is there food stains from like baby formula there or no? Oh, absolutely grew up there. I mean, I don't know what I should say so as not to cause a problem with the Department of Labor. But yes, (laughs) I was very much there. There was a point in time when we would come back from school and our parents would basically shove us in a closet with a television and say, just don't kill each other. Here's a snack. Maybe do your homework. While we're while we finish working, so absolutely, I was there. Oh, that's nice. Oh yeah, that's nice. so it's captive. So you got most of your homework done then. Uh, ideally, it was either that or just watch TV or do nothing. So yes, and then eventually it turned into if you want a car, you'll work for us. If you want us to pay for college, you'll work for us. And I wanted those things, so right, I worked for them. Right. No, that makes it makes sense. I mean, you growing up in a business gives you a unique perspective. Um, a lot of us had to mow the lawn and do other things, whereas you just ended up being like, okay, yeah, I'm going to file these papers. Oh, absolutely. I'm bored. <laughs> Here. I know I can alphabetize really, really well. Cause I done wow. it. Yeah. Yeah. Started early. Oh, absolutely. Get them going. This, yeah. Before computers, this was, I was the stapler, the hole puncher, the let's make copies. <laughs> I knew how to bind projects. I mean, oh, wow. Oh, yeah. Wow. Presentations. I could do that. And then I was the first person who knew how to use a computer. So when I got my driver's license, I got to commute from Akron to Youngstown to teach the satellite office how to use email. Ooh. Oh, yeah. Wow. Now, did you hear the you've got mail thing or where was that? Oh, absolutely. Wonderful. Mm-hmm. Wonderful. So to say that you have worked in most areas of the business would be a gross understatement. Yes. All of that. <laughs> Every crappy job that you could have in a family business that sells insurance, I have done. <laughs> so the insurance piece of it, that was health care insurance, right? Correct. The majority. Now, this was pre-Obamacare yes. is when this started. So what, I mean, what did that look like? Because, I mean, that was how many years ago when... The switch was made, and some of us don't remember yesterday. Oh, so ACA was in 2013, but before okay. that, it was, yeah, just general health insurance without the Affordable Care Act. Okay. So it, it, this was to businesses, this mm-hmm. was to people, this was... Mostly employer-sponsored health plans, a little bit of individual sprinkled in, because at that point in time, it was trendy, but not trending, um, and a little bit of Medicare. <laughs> Did anything, was was anything trending... Back in 2013, was that a thing yet? No. I you didn't have so. hashtags yet no, or anything like that? No. <laughs> no. And I think we both just dated ourselves in some way with this. <laughs> um, so along comes the ACA, mm-hmm. and you guys are making a shift, to put it politely. Yes. Um, what does it take to turn that ship? Because it basically took your business and said, mm, you can't really do this anymore. You got to do this. Is that a good estimation? It is. It, it took the industry and flipped it upside down. So the way that we were compensated changed dramatically. So our revenue was cut in half pretty much overnight. It was a wow. quick shift of, oh, yeah, we have to now abide by medical loss ratio. There's going to be all these changes at the carrier level. So... The government passed a bill, and then they had to figure out how it was all going to work. So they gave themselves three years, um, but the majority of the things that the Affordable Care Act said as the secretary dictates, which meant that the secretary of labor had to determine, or health and human services, had to determine how the process was all going to work. So they said, we're going to have a system, and then we're going to figure it out. And everybody in the industry is just going to wait and see what happens. So the, the visual that comes to mind for me is we're going to build an airplane in the air. By the way, you're a passenger. Yes. Start flapping. 
I start flapping. I like that. There's no oxygen mask. Nope. Um, wh- this is an airplane. Why the hell is there a life preserver? Um, all of those things. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Yikes. Um, so right before that goes live, your personal life takes a turn. Yeah. Um, and your husband ended up committing suicide. Um, the, the thing I want to ask about that is, and we'll just touch on this. Did that feel like this is the end or what was that like? I mean, besides all sorts of emotions, was that like, how does this, how do I go on from here or whatever? Yeah. Um, so I would say I lost Michael on August 31st on September 1st. I woke up, um, in a different space, realizing that I was going to have to tell my kids that their dad wasn't coming home. And about five days later, I realized that the Affordable Care Act was still going to happen on October 1st. And whether I was ready or not, my entire life was changing and I didn't have a choice. I just had to keep moving forward. So it's interesting. So then my question is now, does it feel like a beginning? Now, yes. Then I think it just felt like a slog. Of I've just got sure. to keep putting one foot in front of the other. And I was in that space of we have to survive and I have to survive and I'm not going to worry about how this defines me. I'm just going to keep marching forward. Like I was just white knuckling it through that that transition. And I mean, being a widow, all of that, I'm like, we are just I'm not going to address how I feel. I'm not going to address all the things that are probably swirling around. I'll solve what I need to solve in the meantime, but I'm yeah. still going to be superwoman because this is not going to define me. Keep it in between the lines oh, and just keep going. Interesting. So, I mean, a number of other things happen in there. Yeah. There, there's, there, there's a number of other things, and I don't want to spoil the entire book. Um, th- there's a lot of great pieces in there because there's great lessons in it. And I got to learn those 20 or 25 times as you repeated those here in the studio. Oh, you say 20 to 25. That's very generous and low number. <laughs> <laughs> it's more like 50. <laughs> um, there, there was, there was a, there was a few times of that. Um, so you, you come out with this book. Um, when did you think, Hey, this, I mean, because it, it is an amazing story that you have. And the fact that you learn so many things through it is also awesome. But when did you think I should put, I should write this down? Oh, well, I think like all people in 2020, when they were bored, they thought, oh, this might be a good idea. Um, <laughs> and I got re- time. Have, and you I got re- time. Re- have you rethought that? Yes. <laughs> oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Because I thought this is going to take me six weeks. And it took me about two years to really write what was important because at first sure. it was it was this is going to be a transition about talking about how every business needs to have a what else we need to have something that drives us beyond what we do every day to make money to provide benefit to other people and and that what else is what keeps us going when things get hard and so looking at it that way I was like oh this isn't going to take that long we'll talk about AUI gets back we'll talk about just what it means to build a resilient business and not really thinking about it's more about being a resilient business owner and That took a little bit more time to be vulnerable about and like really show the weaknesses and be authentic and really dig in. Oh, yeah. Because you dug. I did. I did. And I mean, wrote it once and then rewrote it probably two ish more times to get it to where it is. Ish? Two ish. Do you have the decimal point in the right place there? I think so. Okay. I think so. Um, it, and no, it, 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 it is a great book and it's turned out very refined and very well. You mentioned something in here, um, about AUI. How did that come along? How does, it, does that fit in? So at AUI, we believe serving the community is just as important as doing business in the community. So having philanthropy in your business is something that I am extremely passionate about. And I think small businesses, oftentimes they think, you know, I don't have anything that I can give. I don't have that capacity. But really, small businesses are, I mean, the bedrock of philanthropy within the United States. I mean, people underestimate how much small businesses and small business owners give of their time, talent, and treasure. So it was really kind of a a rallying cry to encourage small business owners who may think that they don't have um, something of value to give to a nonprofit to think again. So 
really wanted to work on on that. So AUI gives back. We incentivize our employees to give back to the community. So individual who has the most volunteer hours gets a thousand dollar donation to the charity of their choice. Wow. This year, because AUI is turning fifty, um, AUI and its sister company Clarity HR are doing fifty acts of service to celebrate fifty years. We already have thirty two in process or already like scheduled documented. So super excited about continuing and getting to that that 50 mark. Because we are so busy in fourth quarter, we know that we need to accomplish them usually by the end of September. So our goal is to hit that 50 probably within the next three months. That's amazing. Yeah. That's awesome. So you mentioned Clarity in there. Mm -hmm. How did Clarity come about with all of this? Because it's a different business in many ways. It is. So Clarity HR, small business, fractional HR for companies that don't have, don't want, or don't need a full-time HR person. Not every small business needs HR all the time, but they need (laughs) HR on demand or HR. Like They're like ER doctors sometimes. Come in, you triage, do what you can do. Um, Or firefighters. That's probably a better one. My house is burning down. What can you do? It's just, just gut it. Um, Total loss. (laughs) Or, oh wait, we can just get the fire extinguisher. It's not that bad. It's just a grease fire. Um, (laughs) <laughs> so launched Clarity after I, I purchased AUI. So AUI third generation family business transitioned it from um, my mom after my dad had passed. And so Clarity was, you know, you do benefit so well. Would you consider doing HR? And for years I said no for two reasons. One, I didn't own the business and I'd already grown it to a point that I was going to have to pay seven figures more than I had wanted to initially. (laughs) Lesson to those in family business, grow it, but at the same time, know what you're doing. Right, right. Know what you're paying for. (laughs) Yes, yes. When you add another, yeah, add another zero, it's not fun. Um, Or or an extra seven figures. Um, But uh, when I purchased AUI, then it was, okay, would you please just think about it? You know? Sure. So I had... We piloted the organization. Clarity turns five this year and is continuing to to grow rapidly. We have more employees, and I mean, it's congratulations. Thank first you. Off. That's awesome. That yes. and that's the the fact that you saw that hole in there too to be like, okay, we we do part of this. Let's go ahead and finish that horse. We do, and we I mean, we love small businesses. I mean, on the employee benefit side, we watch businesses grow, we watch them transition, and now on the HR side, we get to empower them around decisions that have to deal with their people. Because so oftentimes as small business owners, we get emotionally invested in the employees that we have because we only have a few. I mean, if you only have 10 employees, you got 10% of your workforce that could be problematic or be dealing with a difficult situation. You want to empower that person to be able to make decisions that are positive for them as well as their people. Totally makes sense. Totally makes sense. And it's that guidance to give the, because as a business owner, sometimes that's not front of mind. Um, yes. Making payroll this week sometimes is front of mind or dealing with that client is, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. No, that's the that interesting piece with that. So you wrote the book. Yes. Um, from there, I get a call from a mutual friend of ours that says, hey, could you record an audio book in the studio? And knowing that we have all the equipment and saying, uh, thinking, yeah, no, we can do this. And having an idea who you were, I'm like, she does a ton of public speaking. Sure. Let's see how this goes. Um, where'd the audiobook idea come from? So I was really excited that I wrote a book and I was telling everyone, Hey, I've written this book. I'm really excited for you to read it. And I can't tell you how many business owners looked at me and said, I don't read. I'm like, <laughs> at all? <laughs> like, I think it's a requirement for ownership. Like you have to be able to read the, Oh no, I don't read books. I listen to podcasts. I listen to audiobooks. I don't read. I'm like, well, crap. (laughs) (laughs) My audience doesn't listen or doesn't read. So what am I going to (laughs) do? This is awful. So this was the means to get the book in front of, around, in the ears of, in the brains of. The, P- the intended audience. Yes, small business owners, because the thought was, you know, it's it's not a long book, Josh. I mean, audio-wise, it's, mm-hmm. what, three and a half hours long? It's not that long. It was days. I know it was days. <laughs> but in my mind, like, this is going to be a short, like, it's effective and efficient. That's it. It's just, it's a short book. So you can listen to it or you could read it. Yes. So when people are like, I don't read books, I'm like, it's like 130 pages. Like, it's a it's, couple of car rides. Yeah, it's no big deal. Right. No. So when we, when we, you and I kind of talked about this, yes. Um, 
I distinctly, I mean, I know you've done a ton, ton of public speaking. You present very well. You, you, you're always well put together with stuff like that. And I said, you're going to hate me. Um, yes. Because I'm going to sit behind that desk over there and just be like, nope, do it again. Nope, do it again. Sit up straight. You're breathing too well. You're breathing too loud. You're breathing this way. You're, you're whatever. Stop tapping the table. Stop tapping. Yeah, did, I may have said that one a few times. Uh -huh. um, did you believe me when I said you're going to hate me? I thought, you know, maybe. But <laughs> I like most people all the time. There's no way that this can get so annoying that I'm going to want to throat punch him. And, and I mean, like 30 seconds of like the millions of hours we spent together. It was only like 30 seconds. That you wanted to throw punch I me, did. which to me is, that's, that's first off, that is a true testament to your resiliency. <laughs> <laughs> um, that speaks 100% to the title of the book there. That is that 100%. This woman is the most resilient person on the planet if she can deal with this. I just kept saying, he's here to make you better. He's here to make you better. He's and, here to make you better. And I would occasionally <laughs> see you close your eyes and kind of, okay, I go to a happy place. It's okay. Go to a happy place. You only have like six more hours. It's all right. Right, right, right. We've been here for 15 minutes. I can do this. Three more chapters. Come on, you can do it. <laughs> right. Because we spent, what, two and a half, three days in the studio, I yes, think. Yes, it was probably about three. And I remember when we first met, you're like, oh, you're going to come audition for your book. And I'm like, but I wrote it. Right. Like, I have to audition. He's like, no, you, you are not allowed to be awful. So I appreciate that you made me audition because you. you, and I believe you would have told me if it was terrible. Because yes. And, and that's why we, we gave you the first chapter to be like, look, can you stand the sound of your voice? Um, I, I knew you would present well, but it's the coaching behind it and making sure that there's times when we say, say things like when I stutter like that, that I'm just going to keep talking mm -hmm. in conversation. But when you're doing an audio book, no one wants to hear you stutter. No. no one wants to hear you like breathe. No one wants to hear you do all these other things. So it's removing all of those. That was the, that was the tough part. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I felt bad for you having to edit it because I would say things like 15 times. <laughs> yeah, no, that's it. it was uh, th there were nights where I went to went to bed with you saying things oh, in I'm my in so my head. Sorry. No, hey, it, it was it was entertaining. It was fun. And, and and to me, the fact that we were able to create, I mean, it turned out great, I yeah. think. Um, you sounded good. It, I mean, it presented the story amazingly well. And to me, I mean, it, it, it really did well, I think. Um, what was your favorite part of recording the book? And you're allowed to say being done with it is an okay <laughs> answer. No, it wasn't being done. It was, Josh, you have the ability to balance between being a good coach and a good cheerleader. Oh, and thanks. so it was... The continued process of, I know I'm almost done, and you were really good at just kind of moving things along. And that's Thanks. what I just kept thinking. I will be done with this soon. And then he's going to have to edit it, and that's totally <laughs> – that's the gift that keeps on giving. <laughs> we, we spent some time on that. Yes. We, we did spend some time on that. Um, if you had to re-record – if like let's say you write another book. Yeah. you going to do this again? Re-record it? Like yeah. record – Yes. Yes. Really? I think so, because I think if it if it has to be, I mean, it's one thing when it's fiction or sure. it's, I mean, a series of interviews. But when you're talking about life lessons that you've experienced personally, I think if you have the capacity and personality and have someone who's willing to tell you whether you're going to be good at it or not. I mean, if I'm not going to be good at it, I would hope that you would tell me um, you're not reading this book this time. I believe I told you numerous times, you're not doing that right. Yes. <laughs> 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 in a friendly way. Exactly. So I would hope that if I complete another book, um, that I would definitely read it myself. We'll see. I mean, maybe some of the reviews will come back of, please find someone else. In which case, <laughs> I'm coachable. <laughs> if it's going to work better for someone else to hear it, read by a robot, I'm okay with that. <laughs> I, I mean, I, I, like I said, I know you've done a ton of public speaking. Um, you sound good. You do not come across. There, there's no, thank like, you. Fran Drescher in your voice. Oh, thank God. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I know that reference may be lost on some people, but that's the... So uh, on top of that, too, we're talking about the possibility of doing a podcast. Mm -hmm. 
um, for, and is it, are you thinking AUI or clarity or which direction are we thinking? With I that? don't know yet. I mean, I think it's probably a combination. I think we've, we've talked a little bit more about entrepreneurship and resilience sure. and really what does, what does business ownership mean for people? So I think it's probably going to be that combination of transitioning that legacy business, doing a startup. I mean, we've got got some interesting corners that we can probably explore. You do because you've had a, I mean, a wide swath of areas that you've had your hands in. Yeah. Um, which is very interesting to me because you're, you, you, and you've adapted, you've been resilient in those areas. I, once again, nice. I'm going to slide, <laughs> going to see how many times I can slide the book title in there. Um, it, the book it's available on audible. Yes. Um, it, for those that are readers, where can they get it at? The easiest place to find it is at reluctantlyresilientthebook.com. It'll direct nice. you to Amazon, and so you can do Kindle or you can get it shipped to you directly. There are hard, like actual physical books, and there's also ebook. So nice, nice, very. So you've got every ver. There is no excuse not. to I read don't this book. have a hardcover book. If someone is really mad about not having a hardcover, they can send me an email, and I'll figure out how to do it. But yep. I just thought, you know, really, do you need a hardcover? No. <laughs> Glue a couple of yeah. pieces of How many more it. trees do we need to kill? It's, it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> so, and then for, if you want to give a little plug to both Clarity and AUI, what, what would people call you guys for? So anything that has to do with the people parts of their business. So nice. AUI does employee benefits, health insurance, whether you're a solopreneur or you're an employer that has 500. That's kind of our sweet spot, small business. We love employers that are classified as small business. And HR, anything that really has to do with your people. You got an awkward conversation you don't want to have and you want somebody else to have it for you, we will do that. You want us to help you create a thick culture that enables you to hire really important and, and wonderful people that are going to grow your business and potentially offboard those individuals who may be sucking the life out of you, we're happy to do that too. Interesting. I, I, li I, li I like the wording there. That is because uh, there's so many people that look at it like, yeah, the, these people are literally sucking the life out of my they business. They can. I think sometimes as small business owners, we think that HR is a prison. It's a whole bunch of rules and regulations sure. and I'm stuck in this box. And it's not. It's really about creating the right type of environment that you want to work in as a business owner. Because if you don't want to be there, we have a problem. Yeah, no, that's, yeah, if you don't want to be there, no one else does either. Exactly. Yeah, no, very cool. Uh, thank you. I really appreciate not only your time today, but you reading the book in the studio. It was a ton of fun. We did have a fair number of laughs. We did. Um, there was some almost tears, <laughs> but we had a fair number of laughs. Thank you for coming in today. I appreciate it. And uh, everyone out there, I really appreciate you tuning in. As always, do your best to take care of yourself, and if you can, someone else. I will see you soon.